Hi, Gary Stearman, along with L.A. Marzulli, and we are going to spend just a few minutes talking with you about his latest work uh, concerning the Nephilim. This is a growing topic, L.A., mm -hmm. and you have made it come to life with your books, with your videos, uh, watchers, your travels to Peru. You are the man. <laughs> and, and I want to start by laying a question in front of you. You, you. you pick up your Bible and you read in the opening chapters of the Bible, <clears throat> uh, Genesis 4.25, and Adam knew his wife again. She bare a son, called his name Seth, uh, for God said she had appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. So you have the beginning of the, of the genealogy of Seth that takes up the entire fifth chapter of Genesis. Then we come to the sixth chapter, uh, it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them. The sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all whom they chose. <clears throat> sons of God coming into the daughters of men. Now a lot of people say that those sons of God mentioned there are the sons of Seth given in the preceding sure. chapter. Sure. What's your response to that? I think that's um, a nice rewrite of what the text says when we go actually go into the uh, Hebrew, and we see what, what sons of God actually is. It's B'neha Elohim. And, of course, the Bible is the best interpretation of itself. So where else do we find that phrase, B'neha Elohim, when we go to the book of Job, which is probably is the oldest of all the books and probably precedes Genesis. And we read in Job that that same sense, or that those same group of words are used again. B'neha Elohim. It always refers to the angelic host. It doesn't differentiate between the good guys or the bad guys, mm -hmm. but it's basically any time we read that, it refers to the angelic host, and it does it three times in the book of Job. So, the in around the fourth century, this this whole idea of the Sethite theory was brought in. The reason for it is the the people in charge couldn't imagine fallen angels having sex with the women, and so they tortured the text. As my late men or Dr. I.D.E. Mm -hmm. Thomas would say. They torture the text and somehow sons of God become sons of Seth. But it doesn't say that. Why, why didn't they just, why didn't the writer just say, why didn't Moses just say the sons of Seth went into the hoochie mamas of Cain? But that's not what it says. You know, it says the sons of God saw the daughters of men. And it's very clear what's going on there. And you don't get the Nephilim from Un ungodly people. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. We have an outside agency. If, in my opinion, Gary, if you were going to take one element out of the Bible, try to somehow twist it and turn it, that's the one thing you do. Because what it sets up is all the uh, prophecies later on, specifically when Jesus in Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13, points back to the days of Noah and says, guess what, folks? It's going to be like it when I return. And they, they, they twist that and they teach it in the seminaries that it's the Sethite view. So we have no idea that some outside agency, i.e. fallen angels, are messing with the genome. Why? To destroy the messianic bloodline. And they almost do it. Only eight yes. people survive in the flood. He almost succeeds with his nefarious plan. But again, it's thwarted. We have the flood. Eight people replenish the earth. And then the text says, and remember, Moses is writing this hundreds of years later, if not thousands of years later, post-flood. And it says, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterwards. Why would Moses add and also afterwards if he's writing thousands of years later? He would just write, well, the Nephilim were on the earth, period. Done. They only happened once. No. Mm -hmm. He says, and he says it very, very clearly, very succinctly, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward. When the sons of God, B'nai Olegim, came into the daughters of men, the fallen angelic host came into the daughters of men, had children by them. These children were the Nephilim, the men of renown. This is what we see when Joshua and Caleb go into the land. And it's the key, in my opinion, it's the key to biblical prophecy. It shows us the seed wars. Well said. Thank you, sir. And when you get to Genesis 14, by the way, Abram comes into the land. and Who's there? Who's there? The Zuzim, the Amim, the Rephaim. These are all giant species. They were there in Abraham's day. They were there in David's day. Goliath was Rephaim. 
uh, L.A., you have to rewrite Scripture to get rid of this idea. But, and it's not a popular idea because it suggests something supernatural, shall we say, meaning angels actually did descend right. to earth sure. and mate with human women, and people are reluctant to believe something like that. Uh, there is a reluctance to believe in the supernatural. Well, very much so. And yet we see in our Bibles that if we take out the supernatural, what are we left with? And I've talked yeah. about this incessantly, you know, uh, talking donkeys, floating axe heads, gold right. coins that appear in the mouths of fish, red seas that part, staff that become snakes. Everything I just mentioned are all supernatural occurrences. And, and we believe all this stuff. We believe in the virgin birth. Why is it that when we get to somehow the Nephilim, we go, oh, that can't happen, and that's impossible. And yet, Scripture makes it very clear. Jude refers back to it. The angels, which left their first estate. You know, what are we talking about? Jude is, is hinting back, in my opinion, to Genesis 6. We see this seed war all through Scripture. And in my opinion, we don't have time to talk about it. The same thing is happening in present day, in modernity. Mm -hmm. It's slightly different under a different format, but the same type of manipulation of the genome is happening today. The angels who left their first estate, actually, if you really read that in the Greek, you know, and examine what that means, uh, it, it, it's saying something like the angels left their primary domain, mm. the place that God designed for them, because they lusted after earth women. And it is, it's true that they did. The, they saw the, the daughters of men that they were fair. In other words, they... They desired they, them. They desired them. It was them. a lustful thing. And lust was on their minds, yep. Yep. so much so, as, as Enoch puts it, that they bound themselves together with an oath, came down upon Mount Hermon, and began to commit the dirty deed, uh, giving rise to all the ancient mythology of the fallen demigods, the... the, the uh, the, the, the Greek heroes, the Titans, the Olympians, sure, sure. all of that quote-unquote mythology uh, devolves out of this horrific event. I agree. And, and here we are, thousands of years later, we have Scripture which is very plain, right in front of us. All we need to do is look at it. Tell me where I'm going wrong. You, you know, folks, you look it up. You look up what sons of God means and then find, you know, go to your Bible, go to Job, and see that they're talking about the angelic host of heaven. It's really simple in my opinion. Well, most of you watching have probably read On the Trail of the Nephilim. This is a beautiful book. I, I think it's one of the best coffee table books I've ever seen. L.A. Marzulli's uh, documentary On the Trail of These Giants we're talking about. And by the way, recently uh, L.A., Russ Dizdar, and myself spoke at Newark, Ohio, where there's a giant earthworks present that seems to suggest uh, an ancient race built something that we don't fully understand. And uh, that site was chosen to talk about this very subject. And by the way, this is uh, five DVDs. There's a Q&A period on here. Uh, and, and I found that very, very interesting. People had good <laughs> questions uh, yeah. that, that pushed us to the edge. Absolutely, they certainly did. <laughs> and, and by the way, it, right there on your screen right now, you're watching this on our website, prophecyinthenews.com. You'll be able to see how you can order uh, this particular DVD set. We we're still offering the, the primary DVD set. A year ago, the first annual Nephilim uh, Mounds Conference. Here's the second annual Nephilim Mounds Conference in L.A.'s book. We're offering that. You can just check your screen and see what the offer is. But wow, you need to get on board with this information because in my opinion, this gives proportion to prophecy. We teach Bible prophecy, premillennial, pre-tribulational, dispensational Bible prophecy. And when you teach that prophetic model, it exactly fits. It fits perfectly, doesn't it? With, with yep. the ancient world. It really Absolutely. does. Absolutely. It agree. brings it all together in yes, a package. It does. And L.A., anything else you'd like to say before we uh, cut away? It's just been great to be here once again with you in the studio, Gary. We'll thanks, have to do this again me. soon, L.A. I always enjoy talking to him. Very exciting guy, and he's always got some exciting project in the works. So uh, <laughs> stick around. <laughs> Come talk to us again. Love to. I'm Gary Stearman. Keep looking up.